What is the most paranormal thing that you've witnessed? When my grandfather, Papa, passed away four years ago, as he was laying in the hospital bed passing on, my mom, my uncle, and my nana were the only ones there, and they said that my Papa kept saying, the turkey, don't forget about the turkeys. We all thought it was just him passing on and saying nonsense since it was like a week from Thanksgiving, but then, at the wake, we went to the funeral home, and there was a flock of turkeys right outside the entrance. We were all super creeped out. Then later the next year, when the headstone we ordered was finally put up, we went to see it, and my Nana said how she liked the plot because it was as if he was looking over the wildflowers in front of it. Then as we left the cemetery, there was one lone turkey in the wildflowers. I have two other paranormal stories, but this is the one that creeped out my family the most. In one of my childhood homes, we had a foosball table in the basement. We would go down there and go on the computer. I remember going back upstairs, going to turn the lights off, and witnessing two poles in the foosball table spinning uncontrollably. When I was a kid, probably about eight, I visited Kenilworth Castle with my family, and I remember very clearly seeing a man watching over from a piece of the ruined castle. He was wearing a navy robe with gold rope tied at the waist. He had ginger hair and looked very angry. I distinctly remember that. Now, me being a kid, I was a bit confused as to why he just stood there especially because pieces of the castle are barred off due to the walkways having collapsed or are just as unsafe for the public to cross. So I turned to my mom, telling her about the man and asking what he was doing, but by the time she looked and I turned back, he had disappeared. It isn't my only paranormal experience, but it's the one that stuck with me. I was in grade school and a distant relative passed away. I was asked to make a slideshow with pictures of her that my grandma gave to me for her funeral. I was home alone playing on my computer rather than working on the slideshow. The USB thumb drive with the photos on it was in the living room table about 10 feet away from me at the computer desk. I get a text from my mom asking how the slideshow is going. I hesitated to reply and thought to myself, I should probably start working on it already. Next thing I know, the thumb drive hits my computer monitor, actually moving it slightly, and lands in my lap. I'm home all alone, all by myself and frozen in fear. Making that slideshow was very uncomfortable after that. I was probably 12, staying over at a buddy's house. His dad was a cop and very reclusive, so as much as I hung out at their house, I had only ever seen him a handful of times and never engaged him. We had a spot in the basement where we played Nintendo. To our left was the furnace workshop room. His dad usually stayed upstairs, but not in the living room, usually the parents' bedroom, I suppose. So when I saw him standing in the furnace room at the workbench, I'll never forget he was wearing a red flannel. I was shocked to see him look at me and grin slightly. My natural reaction was to look away, and a second or two later, when I curiously looked back at him, he was gone. I didn't think anything of it. Later on, upstairs, he asks his mom where his dad is. She says he's off at work. I said, no, he isn't. He was just downstairs at the workbench. Buddy and his mom fell silent. Mom asked me what he was wearing and I replied, a red flannel. My buddy was petrified, the mom visibly shaken. It's not until years later that I realized I'd seen a ghost. Neither mom nor son ever elaborated on it. Shortly afterwards, we went into junior high where I found new friends and kind of lost touch with the buddy. The end. Oh, I've got a story for you. I'm a truck driver, and sometimes I pick up loads from a lot of old, creepy AF places. I was in a super old building in a tiny little town in Virginia. While I'm waiting for my trailer to get loaded, I went inside to go use the bathroom. Now, this place is super old, built in the 1860s if I recall correctly. The bathroom door didn't have a working latch, so instead there was a hook and loop style latch to keep the door closed. The hook was pretty stiff to get into the loop and actually had to be forced into place. I've got my back to the door while doing my business, and there's one loud knock on the door, like someone had struck it with the bottom of their bald fist. I gave them the obligatory, yo, someone's in here. No interruptions after that, but as I finish up and turn to the sink, the door flies open. Not a damn soul in sight. The hook and loop are both still securely screwed into the respective places in the door and frame. Upon returning to the dock to my loaded trailer, I asked the guy operating the forklift if he had knocked on the door, to which he replies no. I asked if there was anyone else there. Again, he replies no. I shrug it off. That is until we climb into the truck to go back to the scrapyard to get my paperwork, and he says something along the lines of, you handled that pretty well. 
there's a reason I'm the only one who comes here to load trucks. Turns out, my account was far from the first of people having strange experiences in that building. I was sitting in my room. I had two Xbox 360 controllers laying next to my Xbox 360 and there wasn't a chance of them falling since they were farther from the edge of my desk. I'm laying there and I hear a bang. I get up and see one of the controllers on the floor. I get up and place it back on my desk. I look over a little while later trying to grab the charger from my phone and I see that controller fly off my desk. When I was about 11 years old, my mom and I went to visit some family friends about three hours north of where I live. They had a son about my age. One night around midnight, down in his basement, my buddy brings out a Ouija board and I, never having played with one, agreed reluctantly. We began to ask it the usual questions. Who are you? How did you die? But then my buddy started to get into some really creepy stuff like, how are we going to die? And how old will we be when we die? Well, about 15 minutes into this, his mom hears this from upstairs and tells us to put that shit away and go to bed. So we hurriedly close it and box it up and get ready for bed. We decide we want a glass of water upstairs, so being as quiet as we could and without turning lights on as to not disturb his mom any further, we start climbing the stairs in the near pitch black. The stairs in the house are the kind that go up to a back door to landing, take a 90 degree turn, and then go up a few more steps to the kitchen. As I'm passing the back door, there's a sheer curtain over the window of it and I can see the moonlight coming in. Suddenly. There is a hellish, blood-curdling scream and an intense pulse of orange light like a fire coming from just outside the back door. I jumped and ran to my mom who was sleeping on the couch upstairs. I was so freaked out I ended up sleeping with her that night. My buddy somehow had the guts to go back downstairs and sleep in his own room. The next morning, we brought it up to everyone and his mom heard it too. But my mom didn't. My friend had the fantastic idea of asking the Ouija board if they were the cause of the scream. It responded, yes. We asked why it did it, and it responded, because you didn't say goodbye last night. To this day, it gives me shivers down my spine to even think about it. Not my story, my father's. He swears up and down it happened, but I was not there to confirm it because this happened years before I was born. His older sister, my aunt, had some friends over for a sleepover. They were doing a seance for funsies. My dad, then a teenager, decided to fuck with them by opening and slamming doors and making noises. They eventually tried to call on the spirit of Beethoven. In an adjacent room, my father dramatically slammed on the keys of a piano. You know, one of those portable electronic ones? At that point, they realized they were being fucked with and went to the other room to confront him. They had a laugh, and he headed back out to the living room they had been in. One of the girls followed him. He said he saw a shadowy figure in the reclining chair. It looked at him, nodded, and vanished before his eyes. He was ready to chalk it up as seeing things when the girl behind him asked if he saw that too. Thinking on it, I've got two that are equally high on the WTF scale. One I can logically explain away, but it's still fucking weird. I just really don't know if it was paranormal or not, even though I can explain it away. The other, I have no idea how it could have happened. It doesn't make any sense in any logical way. Logical one had a shitty childhood. I don't mean like I was the geek everyone picked on or anything like that. It was objectively shitty. I was raised in a cult and cut off from the world. Beatings, degradation, open wounds, and pain were a daily occurrence. Objectively shitty, as I said. On my 11th birthday, I blacked out during the daily beating. I've always assumed what I saw was an injury-induced hallucination, but it's weird as fuck. I remember being beaten until I was standing in a field of purple and gold grass about waist height. There was someone beckoning me to come to them. As I got closer to them, I realized they weren't human. They were shorter than people usually are, maybe a few inches or so taller than me, but they had a greenish-brown skin color and very weird hair that kind of looked like vines. When I got close enough for them to touch me, they placed a finger on top of my head and said something in a language I don't know. After that, I'm back in a bloody pile on the floor of the basement, and it's dark. It took almost an hour to crawl up to the kitchen and another 45 minutes to crawl up to bed. A friend I told about it after I escaped the only other person who I've ever shared this with thought it sounded like an atypical NDE rather than a hallucination, which is the only reason I think it could potentially be paranormal in the traditional sense. The one I can't explain. One of my closest friends was in his 80s when he died. I was in my early 20s when he passed. I didn't know he had died yet when this happened. I was preparing dinner after work. 
and I hear a light knock on my door. I open it and he's standing there, which isn't out of the norm as it was our usual to get together night for dinner. I let him in and he sits on the bar stool by the counter where he always sits for dinner. We have a little back and forth like normal while I'm cooking. As I'm finishing up cooking, I look over at where he was and he's gone. Just completely gone. Even the bar stool was tucked under the counter edge still. I check around my place and I can't find him anywhere. I think I'm going nuts, so I call his mobile. The paramedic picks it up. He had me listed as son in his phone as a partial joke. And after accusing them of stealing his phone, the paramedic explains who he is. Then he said, I think you should come over to your dad's house. Something's happened. Obviously, I rush over there and I get the full story. He died sometime that afternoon near his front door and the mailman had seen the body through the window and called 911. He'd been dead for hours by the time I saw him and talked with him. He appeared right about the time his mail usually got delivered. He disappeared about the time police broke the door down. Our dinners together were a highlight of his week, even in death, it seems. Nothing too weird. Friend and I were fishing in Alaska on a river, and there were a lot of people there. As the day wore on, people drifted away and went home until it reached the point it was only he and I there. We were, in guessing, 50 yards away from each other. I got a feeling like I was being watched. I skimmed the tree line and saw nothing. After fishing a bit, I moved close to my friend, and we were talking, and I noticed he was looking around over his shoulder, etc. Finally, he said, I know this sounds silly, but for the last 20 minutes or so, I felt like we were being watched. Then he asked, You want to go home? We couldn't seem to get out of there fast enough. Looked over my shoulder the whole time we were heading back to the car. I had a dream about someone who went to high school with me. She was a very nice, well-liked person and she died in a drunk driving accident. The driver killed her. She wasn't the drunk driver. I dreamt that she was still alive and we caught up. I woke up that morning and had that feeling when you know someone is in the room with you, even if you can't see that person. I was totally alone in the house though. I inherited an antique bedroom suite of my grandmother's when she passed away. The wardrobe came with a mirror which was taken off and wrapped when we moved it to my house. A couple days after the furniture was set up in our spare bedroom, I noticed someone had taken their finger and drawn an arrow on the mirror pointing up. I asked my husband why he did that. He said he hadn't and no one else had been there. As we sat staring at the mirror, we also realized it was put back on upside down. We saw this from the etching design around the edges. I guess grandma had just been trying to let us know. I was working in an old small cabin way up in the woods with two of my employees with me. We were the only people there and all three of us heard a lady call out, Hello? Hello? From right next to us in the other room, searched everywhere and found nobody in the small cabin or outside. To me, the voice sounded like it was maybe 15 feet away. It sounded like a middle-aged woman alarmed that we were there. To this day, I have no idea what that was, but we all heard it, so... I was going to sit on my bed and looked out the window. It was nice outside and I saw three lights. One was the light from my neighbor's house and the other two were like when you see eyes in the dark and they're reflective. I looked away and didn't think much of it because I thought the eyes were just the light from the neighbors. But then it hit me a second later what I saw. Then I looked back and the eyes were gone. Also a couple of weeks later after that, I was sitting on the exact same place on my bed. I have a desk behind my bed. And on that day, I had a protein shake bottle on my desk. I heard a noise and looked back and saw my protein shake bottle was on the ground. It was in the middle of my desk before and was launched around two to three feet away from my desk. There also was no open windows that could have created wind to make it fall over. I've struggled with accepting what happened was real and have tried to chalk it up to some sort of hallucination, but it felt so real I could not convince myself otherwise. When I was about four years old, we would stay at my aunt's house. It was a big house. I liked it, all except for one bedroom, the one we stayed in. If someone was in there with me, it was fine, but not when I was by myself. Whenever I was by myself in there, something felt really wrong. Time felt like it slowed down. The room would be completely silent, no noise from the outside, as if disconnected from the rest of the world. If you tried to talk, no sound came out. I felt like a thousand eyes were watching me. The room felt like it was alive like there were multiple invisible presence suddenly around. The room felt like a sick predator, silently deciding what to do with me. I avoided being in that room by myself at all costs, but one day I had to go in alone to get my shoes. 
There are three paintings in that room that my uncle got from his travels. One is a nice-looking woman laying on what seems to be an unmade bed. One was a man sitting in a large old-style hammock type thing hanging from the ceiling. As for the third one, I can't remember what it was. So, I go in, and at once everything I described in the second paragraph is happening. I was so scared I didn't even want my feet to be on the ground, so I jumped on the bed. Suddenly I feel breeze. I look behind me, and the painting of the woman is no longer a painting, per se. It's like an open entrance. I can step into her room. She seems nice, but her eyes look wild. She calls me to her, and I listen and step in and climb onto the bed. I don't feel the sinister essence of the bedroom in her room, so I feel a little better. She calls me closer and offers to breastfeed me, to which I refuse and told her I don't want to. She smiles and says, don't worry, she'll have her maid make me a bottle instead. I see movement behind her, and someone is indeed doing what she says. That's when the sinister feeling suddenly multiplies tenfold, and I began to panic. I feel like she is going to harm me. Her eyes begin to look more and more sinister and wicked. I quickly jumped off the bed and back into the room. I swear I never felt such a heavy, hateful energy in my life. I had a minor experience with the second painting that I won't go into, but I ran out of there so fast after that. I begged and cried to my parents that I didn't want to stay in the room until they got really frustrated with me and would let me fall asleep outside on the couch first before carrying me off to bed. A year after that, my aunt died of cancer. I heard a rumor that someone purposefully did her evil to get rid of her because they wanted her husband, my uncle. He was rich. There was also a slight paranormal event the night she died too. I've never went back to that house since then. When I was a kid, my grandma's friend found an antique dresser on the side of the road. She didn't tell us she got it this way until years later. We thought it was hers. Anyway, my mom put it in my room and every single night until the day I moved, five or so years later, there was a white shadowy figure of a little girl sitting crisscrossed on top of the dresser. She didn't move and because the dresser was so tall, the head was cut off and you could only see her shoulders and down. I thought it was the light coming from outside my window and I went so far as to tape my curtains down to prove it wasn't coming from outside. She never moved. She was at the same spot every night. I told my parents, but they didn't believe me, or maybe they were too freaked out to be honest, because my mom had complained strange things had been happening around the house. When they passed away, when I was in middle school, she never reappeared. It's kind of like that idea that kids can see imaginary things or ghosts because they're innocent, but when my parents passed and I realized how shitty life could be, I couldn't see her anymore.